Hey everybody. So I got a couple of comments and requests to talk about what it was that brought me to my back surgery, my back fusion surgery. Um, it all started when I was a dancer by the age of three years old. <laughs> when I had all my imaging done before my back fusion, they were looking at the x-rays and said, well, there's a couple of these PARS fractures uh, and we can tell by the calcification of your bones that this happened when you were a little girl. Were you a gymnast or, and I said, well, I started dancing at the age of three and was dancing my entire childhood and fell on my tailbone many times. Would of course just get back up and keep going. So uh, it started back then and I still wouldn't change a thing. Um, by the time I was in my 20s, I started mountain bike racing and um, that's when I started feeling my SI joints uh, just a little bit achy and my lower back a little achy. Still nothing that was nerve pain, nothing down my leg, uh, but I was always had sort of a sway back and all the massage therapists and PTs that I would go to in my 20s and 30s were trying to sort of strengthen my core and strengthen my hips and get my glutes to fire a little bit more because as a cyclist, we actually don't fire our, our glutes very much. So lots of PT over the years, lots of acupuncture, dry needling, <laughs> lots of everything. Uh, but the pain was always just sort of muscular and maybe a little bit like the joint didn't feel very healthy. Um, but that sway back was always in my life, um, kind of an arched back down there at the bottom. In 2011, I uh, got in a car accident. I was hit from behind, nothing really serious. I drove home, but about a month later when all the inflammation went down, um, I started getting the sciatic nerve pain. First time I had ever felt something like that. It felt like a toothache in my glute and didn't run all the way down my leg. It was mostly burning in my glute, but that was uh, pretty painful. So I went and got some more imaging done and they, saw that um, I had spondylolisthesis, So my L5 and S1 were shifted by several millimeters, um, nothing too, too big, but they said, you know, we should probably do a back fusion surgery. And I said, well, this pain isn't quite that bad. So I'm gonna go to a physical therapist and see if I can take care of it with that. Um, the physical therapy helped tremendously. I learned a lot of very deep, abdominal core exercises, very small movements, something that a typical athlete would look at and say, that's not, that's not a core exercise, but it was uh, after you do them for five minutes, uh, they're exhausting. And so the second thing I did to get rid of that sciatica pain after the car accident was dry needling of my piriformis. So the piriformis uh, is a muscle that surrounds the sciatic nerve. And when your sciatic nerve is inflamed and angry, your piriformis kind of clamps down on it in a protective mode. So the dry needling released the piriformis and absolutely released the sciatic nerve and all of that nerve pain. So I would need to get that done, uh, I think it was every six months or so, still very much worth it. So for 11 years, I was doing these core exercises every single morning, <laughs> purely out of fear of, of having back surgery. And over the years, the sciatic pain would come and go. It would always be on just one side, uh, but, um, but I was still trying to get the dry needling done whenever it would act up and doing all the physical therapy exercises every morning. And then um, the summer before my surgery, I was starting to feel that pain more and more. The physical therapy wasn't helping, the dry needling wasn't helping. So I went and got some imaging done and the spondylolisthesis had shifted several millimeters more. So although I was strengthening all my muscles, uh, it still was not changing the slippage of my two vertebrae. It was just supporting them and even that wasn't enough. So they said, well, you know, this good job on the 11 years of PT. You've avoided surgery for 11 years, but it looks like we may need to get in there. And at that time, uh, the thing that really was, was uh, upsetting me was I got off the bike a couple of times after not even a hard ride uh, or a long ride, but I got off the bike and my right leg collapsed under me. So I was actually getting, I would hate to say paralysis, 
but my leg was was pretty much paralyzed and um, it was numb. So there was no progression as most people say, like my toes are numb and then my foot is numb. I went from no numbness to my entire leg just went completely <laughs> paralyzed and numb. So that got me nervous and started thinking seriously about the surgery. Uh, so as soon as I scheduled the surgery, I was still doing my core exercises, uh, still doing everything I could to remain comfortable. But as soon as I scheduled the surgery, everything just got so much worse. And I'm a neuroscientist. I was wondering whether, was this a psychological release? Uh, did my body realize that I was finally getting this fixed? And it finally just said, oh, thank goodness I can relax. <laughs> but by the week before my surgery, I was actually not able to stand for more than five minutes. I remember being in the grocery store and halfway through getting my groceries, I had to curl up under the floor of the grocery store in the fetal position and just say, don't worry about me. I'm just uh, stretching and resting for a minute. I'll be fine in just a second. So it got really bad uh, the couple of weeks before my surgery, which in a way made me feel more confident about getting the surgery. So I know a lot of you out there are sort of deciding whether you need it or not, uh, but that was my experience. So all I can do is, is tell you that once uh, I made the decision to do it, it was absolutely the right decision. So uh, I hope that helps. I'm doing a little hike here in Fruta, Colorado, beautiful place, as I head back to my hometown of Boulder. Uh, I just did a hundred mile mountain bike ride yesterday, which uh, is something I don't do often. And I wasn't sure if I'd ever do this particular ride after back fusion surgery. I'd done it several times before back fusion, but was absolutely thrilled when I finished the ride yesterday. And to be honest, felt tired, but felt great. So I'm so glad that these videos are helping some of you and I love the questions that you're sending to me and I hope they're inspiring. And as an athlete, if you enter uh, your surgery healthy and positive and with a good diet, you should be able to come out of it very well. Uh, and the recovery is just as important. So thanks for watching.